If you go explore the Zagros Mountains of Iran, you'll find an astonishing sight. Strange, multicolored glaciers that don't melt, even in the heat of summer. But if you get caught in a rainstorm, you can watch them start to dissolve away. That's because they're made not of ice, but of solid slabs of salt. And there's another difference. Unlike their much colder cousins, these salt glaciers don't form here on the surface. Instead, time, pressure, and buoyancy create them from deep underground. Today, most of the Persian Gulf sits on an ancient layer of salt. That salt came from seawater that evaporated around 540 million years ago, early in the time period geologists call the Cambrian. Then time happened. Like, a lot of time. Unsurprisingly, a lot of stuff has piled up on top of this layer of salt since it was first deposited. Enough to bury it 4 to 10 kilometers underground in most places. And if this was normal rock, it would probably stay down there. But when conditions are just right, the salt can begin to rise from its bed and kind of float towards the surface. That happens because of buoyancy, the same force that floats ships in the ocean and causes bubbles to rise in the bath. Picture that ancient salt layer slowly getting buried by rock. As each new bit of rock piles up, it adds more weight on top, pushing down on the salt as well as any other rock layers. All that force begins to squish down the rock, causing their layers to get denser over time. But the salt actually stays at the same density, even as the layers above it get denser. That's because rocks can contain tiny water-filled pores. When the rock is compressed, those pores can be squeezed out, kind of like squishing down a sponge a very heavy sponge. But rock salt doesn't have these water-filled pores, so it acts more like a brick. And bricks don't squish. Eventually, these different behaviors under pressure result in salt layers that are less dense than the rock above them. And thanks to buoyancy, less dense material tends to rise to the top of a mixture. So if something gives the salt a path, like a crack or a mushy spot in the rock above, it begins to slowly float to the surface, kind of like mud squishing up through your toes. This forms what's known as a diapere, a rock formation in which one layer is pierced upwards through another. It's a process that can take millions of years, but if conditions remain right, the salt will eventually reach the surface. And there, it forms what's called a salt dome, essentially a big hill filled with salt. There are about 200 such salt domes in the Persian Gulf alone. But it's when these domes leak, so to speak, that the spectacular salt glaciers form. The leaking salt is pushed out like toothpaste from a tube, flowing and rolling over itself, forming flows that spill into adjacent valleys. These glaciers can be kilometers long and filled with crevices and ridges, just just like their icy cousins. Meanwhile, impurities in the salt give the glaciers their remarkable colors. Of course, salt isn't the most stable stuff ever, and if the glacier gets wet, it can actually dissolve. But since much of the Persian Gulf is a desert with very little rainfall, these glaciers can remain without washing away. Other dry places like Onion Creek in Utah are also home to salt glaciers, but if you want to see some of the most spectacular examples, the Zagros Mountains seem like the place to be. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, which was brought to you with the help of our patrons. If you want to get involved, you can check out patreon.com slash scishow to get started.